Hello and welcome to the Getting Started with Specflow video series. My name is Bas Dijkstra. In the previous video in this series, we've seen how regular expressions can help you create more powerful and versatile step definitions in Specflow. In this fourth video in the series, we're going to take a look at some of the other features that Specflow has to offer and that can help you create features that are easier to read and to maintain. The first thing I want to show you in this video is how to deal with repeating scenarios in your Specflow feature files. You'll often encounter a situation where you'll end up with different scenarios that exercise the same behavior just with different sets of input and output data. Repeating the same scenario and the same steps over and over again throughout your feature file quickly leads to degrading readability and that's exactly what we don't want in our feature files. To clean up these repeated scenarios just with different sets of input and output data, Specflow and the Gherkin syntax offer the scenario outline. A scenario outline enables you to run the same scenario for different examples, so for different combinations of input and output data without having to repeat the same scenario over and over again in your feature file. How it works is First, you create a scenario outline, also known as a scenario template, which is just like a regular scenario, like we've seen before, but with placeholders for the values that are going to be parameterized. You can then add a list of examples in a table to a scenario outline, and Specflow will treat this combination of a scenario outline and a table of examples just like a list of regular scenarios. So when you run your executable specifications, Specflow will run the scenario described in the scenario outline over and over again, once for each example in the table of examples. Let's see how this works in practice. So here we have a feature file describing part of the behavior of our Zippopotamus API. And this feature contains two scenarios which describe the same behavior just for two different combinations of input and output data. The first scenario describes the expected behavior for a country code US and a zip code 90210. And the second scenario describes that same behavior, but this time for the country code US and the zip code five times two. In both scenarios, we're going to check that the response contains an expected value for the place name that's associated with that country code and zip code. So we're describing the exact same behavior twice here, just with different sets of input and output data. And this is a perfect example of where a scenario outline can help you clean up your feature file. So instead of repeating the same scenario, over and over again, we'll create a scenario outline. So instead of the keyword scenario, you use scenario outline and give it a title. And in this scenario outline, we replace the actual values for the parameters with parameter placeholders with a name between brackets. And directly below this scenario outline, we add an, a table of examples where each column represents one of the parameters in the scenario outline and each row represents a specific example that we want to use when we execute our scenarios. So in this case, I've created a table with three columns, one for the country code, one for the zip code, and one for the expected place name. And I added two examples, two rows in the table, one for country code US and zip code 90210, which yields the place name Beverly Hills, and one for the country code US and the zip code five times two, which yields the place name Arlington. And when we execute this scenario outline, Specflow is going to treat this just as if they were two separate scenarios, each with their own values for the input and the expected output. But using a scenario outline here makes our feature file a lot cleaner. So as you can see, when we compile our project, Specflow treats this just as if they were two separate scenarios. And we can even see in our test explorer which iteration used which combination of values for the input and the expected output. Now the nice thing about using scenario outlines is when at some point in the development process you want to add another example to your scenarios, to your specifications, the only thing you really need to do is to add another example to the example table in the scenario outline. So for example, if I not only want to execute this scenario outline for these two examples, 
but also want to add a third example, for example, for country code CA, zip code Y1A, which yields the place of Whitehorse, and build my project again, you can see in the test explorer that a third scenario has been added to this feature file, which uses the values that we just supplied in our examples table. And the same goes for updating an existing example or maybe removing an example because it's no longer valuable. The only thing you need to do is update the examples table and you're good to go. Another situation where we might want to clean up our specflow feature files is when you have to deal with several scenarios in a feature that describe different parts of the behavior of a feature, yet they all share the same initial state. They all require the same initial state in the system before we can verify that behavior. To deal with this situation and make your feature files more readable and easier to maintain, Specflow and the Gherkin syntax offer a background. You can use a background to specify repeating given steps, which are often not essential to describe the scenarios. They are incidental details. You need them before you can start to verify the actual behavior, but they are not essential to the description of the actual behavior. So you can move them literally to the background because they are not as important to understanding the behavior behavior as the other steps in the scenarios. So as I said, Specflow allows you to move those steps to a background and thereby clean up your scenarios and make them easier to read and to understand and to communicate about. And when you execute the scenarios in a feature file that uses a background, Specflow will execute the steps that are in the background at the start of every scenario in the feature. So right before the actual scenario is executed, Specflow will look at the background and execute the steps that are described in there. Again, let's take a look at what this looks like in practice. Here we have another feature file which contains two scenarios which describe different parts of the behavior of our Zippopotamus API, but they share the same initial state. They share the same given step. And in this example, the initial state is not that complex. It's just a single given step, given the country code US and zip code 90210. But still, if I would have many more scenarios in this feature file, and every one of those scenarios would require this same initial state, this same given step, I still would like to, to be able to clean up my scenario by using a background. So let's see what that looks like in Specflow. What I've done here is instead of specifying the given step in the scenarios themselves, I've moved it into a background section, which typically is placed at the top of a feature file, gave the background a name and specified my initial state, which in this case, again, consists of a single given step in that background. And once I've done that, I can safely remove those given steps the creation of my initial state from the scenarios themselves because Specflow, as I said, will execute the steps that are specified in the background right at the start of every scenario. And this is a very powerful way to clean up my scenarios and move that distracting creation of the initial state away from the actual scenarios and literally into the background. And if we execute the scenarios in our feature file containing a background, and look at the additional output that is generated for a specific scenario, you can see that even though the given step is not a part of the scenario itself, it is still executed right at the start of the execution of that scenario, which is exactly what we were trying to accomplish here. So the scenario outline and the background that we've just seen are two very powerful features of the Gherkin language and of Specflow that you can use to clean up your scenarios and your feature files. But that's not all you can do to keep your feature files and your scenarios and your steps clean and easy to read. Another thing that I often see recommended and that I recommend myself as well is using third person perspective in your steps, in your scenarios. So instead of saying something like given I or given the user, name the person who is an actor in your scenario. So for example, here I use the name Anna instead of I or instead of using 
the user because this makes my scenarios much more vibrant and I've also seen teams using actual names of personas that they used in the design and development of their system anyway in their feature and scenario files as well so everybody can relate to an actor in a scenario in a feature file. And this is one thing that you can do to make it much easier to understand who is an actor in your scenario and what their role is in the behavior that you describe. Another tip I'd like to give to keep your scenarios vibrant and readable is making use of present tense. So instead of saying, given I have used or I have ordered or given I have removed or other examples of use of the perfect tense use the present tense so given anna is when she purchases when she removes because this will definitely make your steps easier to read much more alive and vibrant and as a bonus it will make them a little shorter as well because you can describe the same behavior with fewer words and the final tip that I want to give in this video for tidying up your scenarios and your features is only specify data that matters to the scenario outcome. What I mean when I say this is I often see teams creating scenario specifications with a lot of parameters and variables, often in tables, which we will cover in the next and final video in this series. They use a lot of those parameters and values to, for example, to set up an initial state. And typically they do this because they wanted to write a step and a step definition that's highly reusable. But the problem with using steps that take a lot of parameters and a lot of values is that they tend to have a negative effect on the readability of your scenarios. So instead, what I'd advise is to only specify data that matters to the scenario outcome. So for every parameter in your scenario, in the steps, ask yourself, does this value matter to the outcome of the scenario? Does this value play a role in determining the outcome of the behavior that's described in this scenario? If so, by all means do specify it because it's important to the behavior. But you'll see that a lot of those values are just there in the scenario because they are part of some required initial state, but they don't actually play a role in determining the outcome or the result of the behavior that's described in that scenario. And in that case, it's probably better to not specify it in the scenario, but to abstract it away and define a value for that parameter somewhere in the implementation of your step definition. And as I said, in the next video, we're going to take a look at how you can work effectively with tables in SpecFlow using specflow.assist. As always, if you have any feedback or questions about anything that we talked about in this video, please do not hesitate to get in touch. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.